Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. be here one more time in the most exciting church here in Johnson County, Cleburne Full Gospel Holy Temple. Are you excited about it on this morning? Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. I just have a few announcements in your hearing. If this is your first time worshiping here with us at Cleburne Full Gospel Holy Temple, I'm going to ask if you will please wave your hand or rest upon your feet. Amen. Well, we thank God for family being here on today. Everybody looks well. Amen. Well, how many of you enjoy having good, clean fun? Just having a great time. Well, on Saturday, November 20th, we are going to have our game day at 1 o'clock p.m. Amen. You owe it to yourself to come and join us. We're going to have bounce houses. Um, the brothers are going to play flag football. We're going to have volleyball. And, of course, a plethora of board games. So I would like to invite you to, again, our game day that's going to be held on Saturday, November the 20th at 1 o'clock p.m. More information will be coming if there's anything that you would like to add or suggest as we gear up for our game day. Please don't hesitate to let us know. Amen? Amen. And also, our pastor is currently in a series entitled Spiritual Warfare. Yeah, yeah, How many yeah. of you have enjoyed the series thus far? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, we thank God for the word that is going to go forth on this morning. Yeah, yeah. We would like to encourage everyone, those of you that continue to watch us week after week via Facebook Live or YouTube Live, we want you to know that we thank God for you and we appreciate you. Amen. So this does conclude our morning announcements. I am asking everyone to please govern yourselves accordingly. And of course, here at Cleveland Full Gospel Holy Temple, we don't take up an offering because we understand that your giving is between you and God. So if you could, along with me, turn to the back of the sanctuary toward the little red box if you would stretch forth your hand. God, we thank you, Lord, for the offering that is going to be received. We thank you, God, for those that came prepared to give, but there are some that don't have. And God, we're asking that you would honor and grant their desire. We thank you, God, because everything that is given, it goes for the upkeep of your kingdom. And as you continue to favor us with our prayers, blessings, and many more, we will give your name all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. Let everyone say thank God. Amen. If you can rest upon your feet, it's time to eat. Are you excited all about right. the word on today? Amen. We want to have a mind and a heart to receive whatever it is that God is going to speak to us on today. So if you will lift your hands along with me. And don't just repeat these words, but mean them from your heart. And ask the Lord, Lord, sing your word. And bless my soul. Bless my neighbor's soul. And Lord, don't let me leave the same way that I came. Don't let my neighbor leave the same way they came. In Jesus' name, you are now to the hands of our pastor, God's man and servant, Pastor Jonathan Malton. Come on and put those hands together and bless the Lord. Oh, you can do better than that. Let's bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. He's worthy of the praises. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. 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 Lift those hands for a moment. And let's bless the God of the house. When you came this morning, you didn't just come to a place, but you came to the house of God. And I believe that when we come into his house, we ought to enter into these gates with thanksgiving and into these courts with praise. Has God been good to anybody this morning? I said, has God been good to anybody this morning? Did he wake you up this morning? Did he clothe you in your right mind? May have somebody, but did he give you your reasonable health and your strength? Can anybody testify? I thank the Lord that I'm saved. I thank the Lord that I've been delivered. Thank the Lord that I'm on his side. The devil thought he had me, but I got away. But had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, somebody ought to lift those hands. And just give him some glory. 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 It was you, God, that woke me up. 
It was you, God, that stayed the hands of the enemy. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Songwriter said millions didn't make it. But you ought to testify to somebody. I was one of the ones. I was one of the ones. Point to yourself and say, I was one of the ones that did. Slip your hands toward him and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want to welcome you back to, in my opinion, the most exciting church in Johnson County, Cleburne Full Gospel Holy Temple. Tell somebody I didn't come to a show. Tell them I didn't come to watch a movie. Tell somebody else I don't know what you came to do. But tell them I came to praise the Lord. Did you come to praise him? Did you come to praise him? Take about 30 seconds and just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I think on the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out what? Cries out what? Cries out what? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. God bless you. <laughs> you may have your seat. Certainly we thank God for everything that he's done. Certainly the Lord is in this place and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. I believe that God is going to do something for somebody this morning. You ought to testify to somebody. Tell them this is my morning. Tell them this is my morning. This is the morning that I've been waiting for. I came in here one way, but tell somebody I'm not leaving. Ah, well, if you don't want to testify, don't be mad when you leave the same way you came. But I need about three people who came expecting to receive something. Just tell them, I'm not leaving the same way <laughs> that I came. Mm. This morning, I want to talk about the invisible fight. The invisible fight. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. <laughs> and he didn't say just sit around and say, let go, let God. He said, but it's to the pulling down. That means you got to do something. To the pulling down. Of strongholds because we're living in a day and time now where Satan is after your freedom there are things he wants you to be chained to that God never ordained for you to be chained to Jesus ultimate goal for your position in his life is to be free because the Bible said, whom the Son has made free is free indeed. Being then made free from sin, we become servants of righteousness. So if you want to know God's will for your life, God's will for your life is for you to walk in freedom. But sadly, there are so many in the house of God. You're lifting your hands, but you're not free. You're shouting hallelujah, but you're not free. You came to church, but you're not free. Satan has you chained to things that God never ordained for you to be chained to. I used to have a dog. His name was. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> he was a Doberman pincher. 
And those dogs, you had to make sure that they didn't just run foot loose and fancy free. So you know what we did to Sherlock? We put a chain on him. Now, that chain gave him a sense of freedom because he could still move around. He could still operate. But when he went too far, that chain will pull him back. There are some of you, that's a great description of your walk with God. You're trying to flow in the things of God. But it's like there's a chain on you. You go to church. You read a scripture a day to keep the devil away. But when you start really trying to flow in the things of God, you can't get too far without that chain pulling you back into that place or into that thing that God never ordained for you to be in. What are these chains that are keeping people captive? That are keeping people from enjoying true joy? That are keeping people in, from enjoying true peace? Because you got to realize the way of a transgressor is not easy, but the Bible says it's hard. But Jesus said, if you take my yoke upon you, yeah, yeah. learn of me. My yoke is easy yeah. yes, it is. and my burdens are light. When we talk about chains, there are some things that we talk about normally. We talk about being chained to drugs. Oh, Let me tell you this, drugs are bad. And if you're on drugs, God can deliver you. Yes, he can. I don't care how bound you may be. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things will pass away. Yeah. All things will become new. God will break that addiction. Yes, he will. Some people are chained to this thing called porn. Let me tell you something. You're looking at things you know you shouldn't be looking at. God can break that addiction. Some people are chained to sex. You have sex with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. God can break that addiction but when we start talking about change those are like the three typical things that people talk about the sins of the flesh but the ones we don't spend enough time on are the sins of the spirit some people are not chained by drugs they're not chained by porn they're not chained by sex but they're chained by destructive attitudes one thing to have a chain on your wrist. It's another thing to have a chain around your ankles. But what do you do when you have a chain around your mind? You're chained to stubbornness. Chained to a bad attitude. Chained to selfishness. And they used to tell us back in school, your attitude will determine your altitude. You know, I heard a story. A man, he was a builder. He worked for a company. And he would build houses for a living. Build houses. But then he reached the final day, the day he was about to retire. And the owner said, hey, there's one more house for you to build. So he was ready to retire. So he just threw the house up. He put the screws anywhere. Just painted it any kind of way. Just did any kind of thing to the roof. And he went to the owner and said, I'm done. And the owner said, great. He said, give me the keys to the house. Gave him the keys. And he gave him back the keys. He said, this is your retirement gift. I'm giving you the house that you just built. You mean to tell me he had to live in the house that he just built? And some people are building their life, they're building their house with their attitude and then get shocked when they have to live in the house that they built. 
be not deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. And so many people are looking like deer in headlights and they don't even realize that the thing that's caused the detriment of the things that's happening around them is this thing, this thing called a destructive attitude. PTSD. Post traumatic stress disorder. Post. The word post means after. After what? Trauma. Everybody here has had some type of trauma. If you've had your heart broken, you've had trauma. If you had people walk away from you, you've had trauma. If you lost loved ones, you've had trauma. If you've had disappointments, you've had trauma. If you lost jobs, you've had trauma. So when you look at post-traumatic, you're looking at after trauma. Stress. Mm -hmm. After that trauma causes stress. Yeah, yeah. And that stress causes a disorder. So if all of us in here can agree that we've all had trauma and that trauma causes stress and that stress causes a disorder. My question to you is what have you done about the disorder that the trauma has caused in your life? Some of us say time heals everything, but time heals nothing. And there are some people that are saved, but they still got PTSD. They're shouting and they're dancing. And when they come back from their shouting, when they sit down from their dancing, they still have these wounds that have not been healed. And they don't even realize that wound is not just affecting them, but it's affecting everybody around them. And they're wondering why they can't get along with anybody in on the job. They're wondering why they can't get along with anybody in church because they have unwill, un, un, unhealed wounds that have not been dealt with. Maybe it's not a bad attitude. Maybe it's not even PSD, PTSD. But maybe it's negativity and victimization. Everybody out to get them. You know, I told you a couple of weeks ago, somebody has that Tupac syndrome. It's me against the world. You know, when I was in school, I remember I used to get on the teacher's nerves. And they used to get on mine. And I remember I would get called to the principal's office. And they say, Jonathan, how come you just can't act right? And I said, it's not me. It's these teachers. Which one? All of them. <laughs> and I never forget. The principal told me, now, Jonathan, these teachers didn't just wake up in the morning and just decide to pick on you. You know, I didn't bring up the fact I was being disruptive. I didn't bring up the fact that I was causing problems. All I want to focus on is what they were doing to me. And that made so much sense. These people have a lot going on in their life that they didn't just wake up one day and decide to pick on little Jonathan. Some people never escape that mindset. They feel like people just woke up in the morning and just decided to pick on you. Forget about what you've done. Forget about the havoc you've caused. Forget about the things that you've disrupted. Everybody woke up in the morning and decided to pick on you. But when are we going to get to the place where we realize it's not everybody else's fault? We have to take some self-accountability and realize, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, it may be something that I've done or doing that may be causing the havoc that's around me. Because you know what I found out in God? Victims never walk in victory. Because we serve a God that walks in victory. He stepped out of the grave and he walked in victory. And that's what he's ordained 
seen for his people and once we get to the place and realize that I'm not a victim but I'm a more than a conqueror then I can be who it is that God has called me to be but so many people are chained by these characteristics and that's why they're testifying about a joy they really don't have peace that they really don't have because they've been delivered from drugs they've been delivered from porn but the one thing they haven't been delivered from is themselves <laughs> chains that's what I want to talk about this morning my first point self <laughs> realization some people have chains where did these chains come from goes back to that PTSD you know I went to the doctor and the last few times I've gone to the doctor they ask me questions. You know, back in the day, they said, hey, do you have these symptoms? Do you have this? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have this? Do you have this? But you know what they've been asking me lately? They've been saying, does anybody in your family yeah. have this symptom? Yeah. Does anybody have your, in their family have this problem? Yeah. And some of, them, some of us are chained to some things. And I don't believe in generational curses, but I believe in generational influences. Some of us are struggling with some things, and you know why you're struggling with it? Because you were influenced by mama. You know why mama wasn't struggle with it? Because she was influenced by grandmama. You know why grandmama was influenced by it? Because she was influenced by great grandmama. And just because that chain went down to you, now you're struggling with that same thing, whether it be a temper, whether it be a bad attitude, you're dealing with things just just like your mama, just like your grandmama, just like your grandmama, but I need about three people and say, yeah, mama may have had that problem, grandmama may have had that problem, but the buck stops here. I made up in my mind, I don't care how mama may have struggled with it, I'm not mama, I'm not grandmama, I'm gonna be who it is that God called me to be, and I'm gonna walk in the freedom that he called me to walk in, lift your hand towards heaven, and I just say, if anybody's gonna be free, that that person will be me. But it starts out with self realization. Now, there was a time I was addicted to this drink called Full Throttle. I had to have one every day. People would say, you're addicted. I would tell them, no, I'm not. But I remember when I went a day without it, I started feeling it in my body. And the only way I could get that feeling to go away, I had to get another one. So I made up my mind one day, I said, you know what? I'm not gonna drink any more full throttles. I'm not gonna do it. So I remember I went to church and I had a friend who worked for Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola made full throttles. The week I said I was going to stop, right. he said, hey, come by my car after work, after church. I got something for you. <laughs> so I went to his car. Back in those days, they had the black and the blue full throttle. He worked at Coca-Cola, so he had the hookup. He brought me 12 green full throttles, the new kind. I said, this ain't nothing but the devil. And I remember I just let it sit. <laughs> then curiosity started getting to me. I said, I wonder what the green full bottle tastes like. Let me just sip it. That sip turned into two. Two turned into four. Four turn into 12 bottles. After I drank every one, I realized, hey, I got a problem. See, you don't know how chained you are until you try to come out. And let me just say this about Satan. He's not just going to let you just walk into freedom. 
he's going to put obstacles in your way. But you have to make up in your mind, this is what I want to do. But it starts with self-realization. And you know what I found out about self-realization? I don't care how I preach to you. I don't care how many scriptures I throw your way. I don't care how I try to put a guilt trip on you until you come to the realization that I have a problem. You're never going to break those chains. Sometimes we try to cover it up. Sometimes we try to suppress it. I remember I hurt my ankle. And you know, some of y'all didn't know. I would come in here trying to hide it, walk around like nothing's wrong. You know, I had some people point it out and say, hey, why are you kind of limping a little bit? And I just start straightening up like nothing's wrong. Had a problem, but I was trying to hide it. And you know what? As long as I was trying to convince everybody else I didn't have a problem, you know, it caused detriment, but not that much. But you know when the real detriment came? When I convinced myself, it didn't hurt. Because I convinced myself my ankle is all better. So I said, John, John, let's race. Halfway through the race, I was winning. And guess what happened? My ankle said, you're done. Now guess what I'm doing? I can't walk now. I'm literally living. The thing I was trying to hide, the thing I was trying to suppress because I didn't deal with it, because I convinced myself I didn't have a problem. That problem I was trying to hide, you know what they used to say? They used to say, creep will always rise to the top. That issue I was trying to cover up, eventually because I didn't deal with it and I convinced myself I didn't have a problem, it rose to the top, even to the degree not only I had to accept it, but everybody that saw me walking realized I have a problem. And some of us have a problem, we're trying to hide it, we're trying to cover it up, we're acting like we're okay. But I'm gonna tell you when it gets real dangerous, when you try to convince yourself that you're okay, let let me tell you what's going to happen eventually. Not only will you have to come to the realization that this thing is a problem, but everybody around you will see it's a problem because it's one thing to have a chain. But when that chain has you, you'll find yourself in a position where you can't cover it up no more. You'll find yourself in a position where you can't suppress it anymore. You'll find yourself in a position where what's going on on the inside will start showing up on the outside. But when you come to the realization that I have a problem, then you can step towards this thing called freedom. Those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter number 15, verse number 11. All too familiar passages of scripture. We know this as the story of the prodigal son. The Bible says, and he said a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall unto me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took his journey into a far country. Right now, we start seeing the wheels begin to fall off. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. He had a problem. But he didn't come to the self-realization that he had a problem. And the Bible said he started losing it. How many things have you lost just because you didn't come to the self-realization that, hey, it's not everybody else, but I got a problem. And when he had spent not some. He spent all. He refused to come to the self-realization. And it cost him everything. How much more are you going to lose because you refuse to let go of that bad attitude? How much more are you going to lose because you refuse to let go of that stubbornness? How much more are you going to lose because you refused to let go of that negative way of thinking. He was going down a wrong path. 
had, but he refused to pump the brakes and he ended up losing everything. Some of you are right there. You're in a place where you grab hold to something and God is saying, stop. Change the way you're thinking. Change what you're doing. And you're on the verge of losing everything. And you're willing to lose it because you're willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of being right. And God is saying at the end of the day, my, my hope is in the fact that you'll make up in your mind that this thing is getting out of control. Pump the brakes, turn around and start going in the direction that he called you to go. The Bible said he began to lose everything and he began to be in want. And guess what? He lost everything, but he didn't stop going. Isn't it something? That people can lose everything, lose their family, lose their dignity, yeah. lose their peace of mind. Yeah. And you think that they will stop, but they keep going. Keep Faithful to something that's not working. Yeah. Faithful to a process that's destructive. How much more do you have to lose yeah, yeah. until you realize what you're doing is not working? Yeah. That line of thinking is not working. What you're going after is not working yeah, yeah. what you're committed to is not working what else do you have to lose you lost your job yeah. you lost money you lost dignity yeah. you lost sleep you lost your peace of mind you lost your you lost everything and you're still going down that same door that's exactly what a chain to do yeah. the bible said he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have fain had filled his belly with husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. But finally, somebody say finally. And when he came to himself, it would have been a better story when he started losing things, he came to himself. But he lost everything and finally came. It's better late than never. At least he came to himself. And that's the only way you can break free of those chains. When you make up in your mind, I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want to go in this direction anymore. That's what true repentance is all about. The word repentance comes from a Greek word called metanoia. Somebody say metanoia. And that means I changed my mind. When you change your mind, that means I'm going the wrong way. I'm going to stop being faithful to things that don't work I'm going to stop being faithful to things that are disruptive and I'm going to make up in my mind that I'm going the other way I'm tired of doing things my way but I'm going to start doing things God's way because my way is what got me where I am my way got me depressed my way got me frustrated my way cost me so much but when you make up in your mind and I'm going to stop going my way and I'm going to start going God's way the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You ought to tell somebody I'm not going my way anymore because my way didn't work but I'm looking unto Jesus who's the author and the finisher of my faith. But it starts with self realization. But then after self realization then comes Confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, God has raised him from the dead, thou wilt be saved. You know, the Bible says Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. And when he got on the other side, he knew that there was a man that needed deliverance. But between where he was and the other side, the Bible says a storm yeah, yeah. came. Do you realize there's a place that God has ordained for you to be? Yeah. And like I said earlier, the devil is not just going to let you walk into that place without any trouble. Amen. There was a storm that came between Jesus and where he was ordained to be. Now watch.
Watch this. Jesus was on the ship. And the storm came. The winds and the waves beat up against the ship. The water got out of control. It's one thing when the boat's in the water, but it's another thing when the water started getting in the boat. Now, if the wind was hitting the boat and Jesus was in the boat, that means the wind was hitting Jesus. If the water was in the boat and Jesus was in the boat, that means the water was hitting Jesus. But the wind didn't wake up Jesus. The water didn't wake up Jesus. The lightning didn't wake up Jesus. The thunder didn't wake up Jesus. But when Jesus heard the cry of his disciples, when Peter opened up his mouth and said, carest thou not that we perish. And let me just say this, some of you right now, you are in a treacherous situation and you don't even know it, but because you're a child of God, you have the power to wake up Jesus. All he's waiting on you to do is realize that the power of life and death is in your tongue. As long as you keep in secrets with the devil, then you'll find yourself keep going around that same mountain. But when you make up in your mind that I'm tired of going around this mountain, but I'm going to wake up, open up my mouth, and I'm going to cry out for help. You know, they used to sing a song that said, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. When you make up in your mind that I'm not going to keep this thing a secret anymore, but I'm going to cry out to Jesus. When Jesus won't hear the thunder, when he won't hear the rain, when he won't feel the wind, when he won't feel the water, he will hear his people when they cry out to him. I dare somebody that may be in a storm right now. I dare somebody that may be chained to something right now. Just take about five seconds and just holler, Jesus, I need your help. Say, Jesus, I need your help. Tell him I need your help. I've been going around this mountain too long. I've been frustrated by the same thing too long. You have the power to wake up Jesus. All you have to do is open up your mouth and cry, help. The Bible says that the demon possessed boy, he had what was called a dumb spirit. Doesn't mean that he was intellectually challenged. He just couldn't talk. He was tormented and couldn't say nothing about it. He was fighting and couldn't say anything about it. He was struggling and he couldn't say anything about it. And there's so many of you sitting up in the house of God. You're tormented, but you don't want to talk about it. You're struggling, but you don't want to talk about it. You're walking around through your day-to-day life and you know you're going down like the Titanic, but you don't want to talk about it. But God is saying it's at the point where you make up in your mind that I'm willing to let this thing out. I'm tired of keeping secrets with the devil. I'm tired of keeping secrets with myself and I'm going to open up my mouth and I'm going to say, Lord, I need some help. One more time, shout help. Help. Jesus spoke to the wind. Let me just rewind this for a minute. He didn't speak to the wind. He rebuked. (laughs) Wait a minute. God sent the wind. He sent the waves. So let me ask you something. How can Jesus, who's God in flesh, Rebuke something that God created. So was it really the wind and the wave that he was rebuking? I'll tell you this. You know what he was really rebuking? He was really rebuking that spirit. And some of you under the sound of my voice, you think you just got caught up in life circumstance. But what you're really dealing with, you're dealing with a spirit. You're dealing with a demon who's lead, he's using life circumstance uh, to try to keep you chained to things that you shouldn't be chained to. Uh, but how do you deal with a spirit? Uh, you don't just sit back and do nothing. Uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Uh, through the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, how do you deal with a spirit? You got to get in the spirit. Uh, and when you get in the spirit it'll start showing up even in
in the natural man. Now, if, this is how you deal with a spirit. You got to have a teachable spirit yourself. Uh, you got to have a spirit of humility yourself. Uh, you got to have a Christ like spirit yourself. Uh, and when you have a teachable spirit, when you have a wise spirit, when you have a Christ like spirit, uh, then whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. But when you're part of the problem, you can you can't bind Casper. But when I jump in the spirit and say, you know what? This is not my job that's calling all this chaos. This is not my family that's causing all this chaos. This is not my bank account that's causing all this chaos. Satan, this is you. And because I know it's you, he gave me the power of the kingdom. And because he gave me the power of the kingdom and I'm going to have a wise spirit. I'm going to have a teachable spirit. I'm going to have a spirit of humility. Whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. He says, I will arise and go to my father. And I'm going to confess it. I'm going to say unto him, Father, I messed up. I sinned against heaven and before you. I am no worthy to be called your son. Make me. As one of your highest servants. Why don't people confess? If confession has this much power. Why don't people do it? Why is it so hard. For people to say. You know what? The problem is not everybody else. It's me. Do you know there's power in saying. Lord it's not my mother. It's not my father. Not my sister. Not my brother. It's me oh Lord. There's power in it. Why won't people do it? Blame. They won't blame everybody else. Yeah. I'm like this because they did this. Mm. I'm like this because mama did. Mama been dead a hundred years. Yeah. I'm like this because, you know, when I was in school in the second grade, they said this. And they just blame. To blame is to be lame. Yeah. Right. I can understand you blaming everybody from your problems when you're 15. But when you're 45, <laughs> and your issues are still because of everybody else, there's a dead cat on the line somewhere. But when we make up in our mind that my issue is my issue, forget about what was done to me. This is mine. Forget about what was said to me. This is mine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take self accountability and I'm going to deal with it's not anybody else's responsibility to deal with me, but me. And when you make up in your mind that I'm going to stop blaming, then we can step towards this thing called deliverance. Another reason, shame. I don't want to talk about it because if I talk about it. People are going to look at me like I'm crazy. Let me tell you something. Keep living. People are going to look at you like you're crazy anyway. But at the end of the day, I'm not talking about telling everybody your issues. But you got to have somebody that you can be real with. That's why I thank God for Cleburne Field Gospel Holy Temple. Because this is a place where it's okay not to be okay. People are not sizing you up. Amen. Just trying to see how spiritual you are. We realize that, hey, all of us got a next step. All of us have progress to make. All of us have moves to take and steps to take. None of us are leaning up against the cross, looking down on anybody, telling them if they cross the T's and dot the I's, one day you might be like me. But every one of us are down at the foot of the cross and realize just like there was room at the cross for me, there's room at the cross for you. You may come to church and may not have it all together. People are not going to point their finger at you because we're too busy trying to get ourselves together. We're too busy trying to see Jesus face in peace. At the end of the day, we want to see you healed. We want to see you delivered. We want to see you take your next step. At the end of the day, nobody's sizing up anybody. We want to see you win because if you win, I win. One can chase a thousand. Two can put ten thousand to flight. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, we're in this thing together I don't rejoice when you mess up as a matter of fact the Bible says restore such one with a spirit of 
meekness. Lest you be also tempted. And that's the culture of our church. At the end of the day, we do life together. And we want to see you make it. Talk to about five people. Just tell them, I want to see you make it. I want to see you make it. I want to see you make it. You may stumble along the way, but guess what? We're going to help you pick yourself up and dust yourself off and be the man of God and the woman of God that he's called you to be. You don't have to be shamed. Point number three. Process. (laughs) There's a process in order for you to break free from those chains. The Bible said he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Now watch this. First of all, he had to have self-realization. Then he had to confess there's a problem. Then he had to make movement. Let me ask you a question. If we were walking out of church and just say you fell down and broke your leg, would you say, no, just leave me down here. Give me about five minutes, I'll get up and I'm getting in the car. No, 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 no. You're going to say, take me to the hospital. You're not going to say, hey, you know what? It'll come back together some kind of a way. No. You're going to say, I need some help. Take me to the hospital. When I get to the hospital, they're going to let that leg sit. They're going to let that leg heal until I'm fully recovered. And then I'll be able to walk again. Here's the thing. In the natural realm, we understand that healing is a progress. But in the spiritual realm, we think everything is going to be wham, bam, thank you, man. Sometimes it takes time for healing to take place. There are some healings that can take place instantaneous. Jesus spoke to the blind Bartimaeus and he was healed. The woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment and she was healed. The man that was deemed possessed, Jesus cast the devil out of him and he was healed. The Bible says it talks about the lepers and they were healed. But then some, the Bible says, as they went. They were healed. Some healings are instantaneous, but then there are some healings that are process. And here's the thing. Some of us are on that process of healing. And here's the thing. If you're on that process of healing, you can't let anything disrupt that process. That's why the Bible says you got to come out from among them and be separate because you may have come out of that chain but you're still sensitive to the chains that are around you that's what sanctification is all about guess what some people can go to the gym and be okay but if you full of lust you need to buy at home workout equipment you're not chained anymore but you can't handle a gym right now you need to get a little bit stronger some of you under the sound of my voice, you don't smoke any what more. Yeah. But guess what? You need to keep paying at the pump. Yeah. Yeah. Because as soon as you start going inside and you see those Virginia Slims, they're going to start calling your name. That's why you can't test your deliverance. He said, whom the son is set free is free indeed. You know, if you study like the old slaves, when they had a little freedom, guess what they did? They didn't just walk out of the cotton field. (laughs) They didn't just walk out of the master's house. As soon as they found out they were free, they ran and they didn't look back. Let me tell you something. As soon as God set you free, you got to make up in your mind that I'm running for my life. And when I run, I'm not going to look back. I know the world is calling me. I know those chains are calling me. I know those addictions are calling me. But I got free. And if the Lord set me free, I made up in my mind that I'm going to keep my deliverance. I don't have time to look back and see what was behind me. I don't have time to go back to those things that had me bound I was bound one time if I go back to it I I might not get free again but if God set me free I'm going to make up in my mind that I'm going to run for my life I'm not going to let anything deter me I'm running up the king's highway (laughs) 
Self-realization. Somebody says self-realization. Self confession. Somebody shout confession. confession. Somebody shout process. process. Yeah. After all of that. Well, Pastor Halton, you're talking about a process. Does that mean that I have to do all this stuff to get deliverance? Watch this. All, <laughs> all he did was move yeah. towards the Father. Yeah. He moved towards the Father. And the father ran towards him. Y'all yeah, yeah. didn't hear. He moved yeah. towards the father. And the father ran towards him. Some of you, you're wondering what all you have to do. All I'm telling you to do is just start moving towards Jesus. And if you start moving towards Jesus, he'll come running after you. Because at the end of the day, he wants you delivered more than you want to be delivered. He wants you free more than you want to be free. All you got to do is make up in your mind that I'm going to move towards him. What does moving towards him look, and look like? Some of you moving towards him means coming to church every time the church door is open. Some of you moving towards him means opening up your Bible and seeing what thus said the Lord. So what does moving towards him look like? Some of you moving towards him mean getting down on your knees uh, and spending that quiet time with him. Some of you moving towards him meaning means coming out for some things uh, that you know you shouldn't been attached to anyway. But if you move towards Jesus just like this father, he'll come running after you. Pastor Holton, I need scripture to that. The Bible says, sanctify yourself. And the very God of peace yes. will sanctify you. Oh. <laughs> hey, thank you Lord. Community. And the son said unto him, Father, sin against heaven. And in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Yeah. <laughs> but the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe. Put it on. Put a ring on his hand. Shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf. Kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For my son, who was dead, is alive again. And he was lost. He was found. And they began to be merry. You can't do life alone. He got his freedom and he had people that were around him that was willing to celebrate their freedom. Let me tell you something. That's why I believe in having a local church home because you got people around you that's willing to celebrate your freedom. If you say, Pastor Halton, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Guess what? You have people that'll meet you right where you are. Amen. And will celebrate your next step. But the point of the matter is you can't do life alone. You ought to point at somebody and tell them you can't do life alone. Tell them you can't do life alone. You need somebody. You've been trying to do it on your own. If you could do it all by yourself, you would have broke those chains by now but that's just proof positive that you can't do it by yourself. You need somebody. You need somebody to hold you accountable. You need somebody when you're looking down to say, hey, pick up your head. You need somebody when it seems like you're drifting away to say, hey, I'm praying for you. You don't just have my prayers, but you have my presence. Tell somebody, I need you and you need me and we're going to watch God turn some things around. Somebody say self-realization. Self <laughs> somebody say confession. confession. Now somebody say process. process. Now say community. community. When we own those things, no chain yes. can hold us. Nothing can keep you right. bound. <laughs> I remember Sherlock. We put that chain on him. And he would just go so far, and the chain will yank him back. He'll go so far, and the chain will yank him back. Some of you, that's a good description of your walk with God. You can only go so far, and that chain will pull you right back. You go so far, and that chain will pull you right back. But one day, Sherlock saw something. And what he saw, the desire yeah. to get what he saw was stronger than the chain that was holding him. And when he saw it, he went after that. 
and that chain can hold them back that chain broke collar and all because what he saw in front of him was stronger than what was holding him back and let me just say this Paul said I'm forgetting those things which are behind and I press toward the mark which is Christ Jesus when you make up in your mind a charge I have to keep and a God I have to glorify and the things that God has in front of me I had not seen ear had not heard neither have it entered into the hearts of men when you realize everything that God has in front of me is exceeding and abundant above all that I can ask or think what God has in front of me is stronger than the chains that are holding me back so whatever I got to do to get to what God has in front of me I'm willing to do it I, I'm willing to break this chain I, I'm willing to go after it I, if I got to pray a little bit harder I, if I got to fast a little bit longer I, if I got to come to church before church time starts I, I got to do whatever I got to do I, to get to what God has for me he that hungers and thirst I, after righteousness shall be filled you ought to tell somebody what Whatever I got to do. Tell them whatever I got to do. If I got to cut some people off, whatever I got to do. If I got to lay aside every weight and sin that easily, but whatever I got to do, I got to get my freedom. I, I got to break free of these chains uh, because God has some things for me. Uh, and if God has some things for me, I don't have time for anything to hold me back. I got people to see. I got things to do. I got a calling to fulfill. And if God has something for me, whatever it is God has for me, tell them maybe it is for me and I'm not going to let a person place or thing uh, get in between what God has for me if it's a fight the devil wants it's the fight the devil going to get devil let's get it on because God has something for me and if God has it for me if I got to fight for it I'll fight for it if I got to press my way I'll press my way if I got to grind, I'll grind. Yeah. But whatever God has for me, God is going to lead me to that very end. That's what Paul said. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I killed my faith. I finished the course. Now there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Don't let another chain keep you from getting what it is that God has for you. Quit letting chains mess up your future. Quit letting chains mess up your family. Quit letting chains mess up your peace of mind. Quit letting chains take away your joy. Get a vision of what it is God has ahead of you. And if you see what it is God has in front of you, what he has in front of you, is stronger than the chain that's holding you back. The invisible fight. I want everybody standing. I want everybody standing. Every head bow. Every eye closed. Some of you right now. You're in a fight. And nobody knows it. You're smiling, but you're fighting. Yeah. You're laughing, but you're fighting. Isn't it something that the water didn't wake up Jesus? The wind didn't wake him up? But when his child cried, he didn't hear the wind, but he heard the cry of his child. He may not hear the wind, but guess what? He hears the tear as it rolls down your cheek. He may not hear the wind, but he hears that broken heart. He may not hear the wind, but he hears the rustling of you tossing back and forth all night long. God says, I hear all of that. God says, I hear when you sleep eight hours and you're still tired. He says, I hear when you keep eating and eating and eating and you're not hungry, you're just coping. He says, I hear it. He says, I hear you when you're not eating at all. You say, I'm not hungry. But what it is, you're crying 
and nobody knows about it. He says, I hear that. But he says, you got to do something. You got to open up your mouth and say, I need help. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? If you're here this morning and you know that you know that you know that you're chained. Notice this. He rebuked the wind. But the wind wasn't real, the real problem. It was the spirit that was causing the wind. You know what Jesus did? He went to the root of the problem. Jesus doesn't want to just deal with the surface. Of, he wants to get down to the root of it. God told Jeremiah, he said, I set thee before kingdoms. Pull down, pluck up, root out. And there's people here, God says, I want to get to the root of that thing. Because if I just chop it off at the top, it can grow back. But if I root it up, that's what true deliverance is all about. If you're here this morning or you're watching us, I want you to ask the Holy Ghost, what are you saying to me? Through this message. And if you're here and you're chained to something that you know that you shouldn't be chained to, this morning is your day of deliverance. If you have a chain and you want to break free, just like Sherlock did, if you want to break free, this is what I want you to do. I want you to step in the nearest aisle and I want you to come down. Because you can't do it by yourself. Come, 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 come. That's it, that's it, come. Come, 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 come. If you have a chain and it's holding you back, God wants to set you free this morning. Hallelujah. Lift those hands, lift those hands, lift those hands. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as I lay my hand on my brother, God, I'm asking you to get to the root of every chain. Root it out, God. Give him true joy. Give him true peace, God. In the name of Jesus, as I touch and agree with him, God, everybody, Lord, that has their hand lifted, God, that's chain. I'm praying for deliverance right now. I'm praying that you set them free, God. Break the chain off of their mind. Break the chain off of their heart, God. In the name of Jesus, set them free, God. In the name of Jesus, do it now, God, in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to lift those hands right now. Lift those hands right now. Lift those hands right now. And just say, Lord, set me free, set me free, set me free. Free me from that bad attitude. Free me from that wrong way of thinking. Free me from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. Free me from the unforgiveness. Free me, Lord. I want to walk in freedom. I want to talk in freedom. I want to move in freedom. I want to have true peace. I want to have true joy. If I got to open up my mouth, I'll open up my mouth. Somebody say, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Set me free. Change me. Change the way I think. Change my attitude. Change the way that I operate. I want to be free and I want to be free indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe that God has set something free in life, this is what I want you to do. I want you to put those hands together and give them a praise. Give them a praise. Come on and give them a praise. Come on and give them a praise. Give them a praise. Grab right back and just shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. How many enjoyed yourself this morning? How many enjoyed yourself this morning? Tell somebody the Lord did something for me this morning. The Lord did something for me this morning. I'm not leaving the same way I came on your way out. Amen. I want you to visit that red box. Give God what's right, not what's left. And let me tell you something. God will open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Do you believe that? Lift those hands. Lift those hands. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your move in your sanctuary this morning. Thank you how you've touched your people. Thank you for the chains that you've broken, God. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the deliverance that took place in here this morning and those that watch. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in their lives. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're asking that you continue to take us higher, God. We rebuke the hands of the enemy even now in Jesus' name. Lord, as we leave this place, but never 
from your presence. Bring us back at the appointed time and on time. These and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. tell your neighbor I broke free. Tell him I broke free.